How can you get better soybean yields on your farm? Well, we're going to talk about a number of steps that we try to follow on our farm, but just keep in mind that your farm is a little bit different than ours. Some of these things might be a little bit different. So just one quick example. We've talked about Kip Cullors occasionally on the show, and he's that world record soybean producer. One of the things that he'll use are a couple of things, Bioforge and Cobra. And that Cobra this year, in combination with Bioforge, when we used it on our farm, we didn't get the same results that he had. Well, boy, Darren, that's surprising. Yes. It's only like three states away <laughs> and with totally different growing conditions. How can things turn out different for him? Well, that, that is a good question. Let, let's get right on topic here, Brian, because we're talking about getting the best soybean yields we can possibly get. And when you think about it, what do you want? You want profitability and you want high yields. So getting high yields great, but you don't want to have to spend $1,000 an acre to get 70 bushel beans or 100 bushel beans. You want to try and do it for the low cost as well. Yeah, well, so, yeah, but low cost shouldn't be your focus. You want to always consider anything you're going to put into your crop as an investment. And is that investment going to pay off? That's what we want to get into. All right, so let's just start from square one. We're going to plant soybeans, not on this field because we planted soybeans here this year, but say we're going into a field we had corn on this past year. Now we're going to plant soybeans in. The first First thing we look at is the soil. What do we need for fertility to raise that crop? And here's where a lot of guys go wrong. They say, well, what are you talking about? I had corn there last year. It's going to be carryover fertilizer. Well, that may be true if you raise 40 bushel corn and you fertilize for 100. But if you raise 200 bushel corn and you fertilize for 200, guess what? There's not much left out there. You need to fertilize for that soybean crop to be successful. Yeah, keep in mind that if you raised a 200 bushel corn crop, for example, your grain remove not the stover let's say you leave the stover out there just the grain when the grain left the field you had roughly 76 pounds of phosphate leave and 60 pounds of k2o potassium that's what left with the grain in corn. So unless you fertilized with more than that last spring or last fall, then you're in a deficient situation already. Or in other words, you have less available than what you did a year ago. So you're not in good shape there. And then keep in mind that a 60 bushel soybean crop with the grain only, just the grain only, takes about 84 pounds of K2O potassium off the field and about 48 pounds of phosphate off the field. So in a two year cycle, you're removing a lot of P and K even if you leave all the residue out there. Grain removes a lot when you're getting higher yields. Okay, yeah, you talk about NPK, that's fine. But don't forget about micronutrients. They're very important for soybeans because think about it. Soybeans accumulate a lot of that fertility right about the months of July and August when they're trying to produce those soybeans. So they don't take a lot of fertility to grow, but then once they start producing seed, they take a lot of fertility. Th those processes inside that plant have to happen very fast. So putting out micronutrients on soybeans is critical too. Okay, so where are you going to put these fertilizer products on and when are you going to do it? On our farm, we like to do a lot of stuff in the fall because we're trying to get that work done going into the spring. Now, we'll only fertilize ground that is not going to flood in the spring. So we've got some river bottom ground. We do all that in the spring and absolutely we would recommend that to you as well. But on the higher ground, the rolling hills, that kind of thing, we're going to fertilize that in the fall. We like strip till, we can do conventional till also, but we like getting fertilizer down deep one way or the other, however you do it. Get some fertilizer down below three, below six, even below nine inches in the soil. Get it down a little deeper in the soil. If you've got some fertility down at 10, 12 inches deep, that's a great thing because soybean roots grow fast. They grow way faster than most people think about. Even in a couple weeks after you've planted that seed, if you have good growing conditions and good soil conditions, you'll have roots down at least a foot deep and maybe even a couple feet deep. It's unbelievable how fast those roots grow. So you've got to have some fertility. We want to have that fertility a little bit deeper in the soil. And then we'll usually do that for P and K. For micronutrients, we're putting that on in the spring as a starter, right in the furrow usually. We like to keep it off the seed, but we're not using a real high rate. Maybe a quart, maybe a quart and a half of micronutrient blend. That's about all that's necessary most times. The last comment on P and K, if it's dry, you definitely got to get that out in the fall, especially if you're in drier country because it takes quite a bit of moisture to break those pellets down. If you're using liquid, you can certainly get by doing it in the spring, doing a two by two, something like that, but you can't put a lot of fertility right in the furrow or you risk having some seed injury. Now, the other thing when it comes to seed is seed treatments. This is one that guys have really taken a leap forward on their farms with by putting the right seed treatment out. We look at how we used to take beans right out of the bin and plant bin run beans out on our farm. Well, you know what rate you planted them at? 
considerably more seeds per acre than what you're doing now because, well, they probably aren't all gonna germ, well, they probably aren't the best condition, all these things. Now we're all getting seed that's coming in a bag or a bulk bag or running through somebody's seed plant. It's good seed, it costs lots of money, it's a big investment. We've gotta protect that seed. So you need to use something that has a good fungicide package. Also, the insecticide seed treatments have really been paying if you've got early season bean leaf beetles, if you've got some other seed attacking bugs, those are very important. And then we look at products like Quick Ritz, biological products that have worked. Quick Ritz has been a good one for us. It has a beneficial bacteria and fungi. And also on soybeans, yes, we're still talking about seed treatments, rhizobia inoculant. You've got to have that. If you don't inoculate your soybeans, you aren't going to get the nodules it takes. And soybeans need so much nitrogen to produce that high protein seed. That's something you absolutely have to do every single time you plant beans. Don't listen to these people that tell you, well, if you've had beans on the ground the last two or three years, you don't need inoculant. They don't know what they're talking about, okay? We're looking for a one or two dollar investment and a half a bushel to a bushel gain minimum. In some cases, it's more than that. The reason why you're gaining that yield is because we have more nitrogen available to the plant. This bacteria, the inoculant, it's live bacteria and what that does is it helps fix nitrogen out of the air and put it in a form that your plant can use. And if nothing else, even if you're not getting yield gain, you'll have a little bit more nitrogen left going into next year. Even if it's two or three pounds of nitrogen, that's usually enough to justify paying for that inoculant. And when we talk about crop protection, you've got to start with a pre-emerge herbicide in soybeans because we've got tough broadleaf weeds that we just can't bring down in crop very well, especially if they get big. So start out with something down, especially focus on the broad leaves, using something like Valor, for example, or one of the Authority products, or even old Sencord. They do a pretty nice job on broad leaves. Then you mix that with a Treflan, Sonlan, or Prowl, do a good job controlling the grass as well, and you've got a total program down. And the last thing we'll mention, which probably should have been the first thing, is getting your drainage right. Soybeans don't like to have wet feet, especially when you talk about rhizobia bacteria and getting those nodules established and biological products, all these things. You've got to have drainage right on your field if you want top yield. Well, there are some farmers around the country who've raised 80, 100, 120 bushel soybean yields. Now, we haven't yet on our own farm, but we're working on it. Last year, our, our highest yielding full field was over 75 bushel per acre. This year we're down a little bit mainly because of the weather conditions and early frost but still the point is it's possible to get those kind of yields. So don't just think in your mind well I just can't get there anyway there's nothing I can do. There absolutely is something you can do. I don't care what your situation is you can raise a better soybean crop but you have to put forth some effort you have to study a little bit you have to invest some money and you can absolutely accomplish what you want to. It may take a little bit of time but you can get there. Well you'll never get top yields if you don't have great weed control. We'll show you how to identify and control this tough weed later in the show.